नमस्कार एंड अ वॉम वेलकम टू यू ऑल दिसोलॉजी नीट सेशन वेर वी विल बी प्लजिंग इन टू द क्वेश्चन एयर ऑफ द चैप्टर ब्रीदिंग एंड एक्सचेंज ऑफ गैसेस सो विदाउट एनी डिले लेट्स स्टार्ट एंड लेट्स क्रैक इट सो इन दिस चैप्टर ऑफ ब्रीदिंग एंड एक्सचेंज ऑफ गैसेज वी हैव हैड द ओवर व्यू एंड इन द सिनोप्सिस वी हैव स्टडीड अबाउट वॉट इज द ह्यूमन रेस्पिरेटरी सिस्टम okay how exactly is the mechanism of breathing and what is the process of exchange of gases that takes place in the body okay uh, and in what way does oxygen travel in the body in what form does the carbon dioxide travel and ultimately we have studied different types of pulmonary and uh, the respiratory volumes and uh, yeah we have studied that and, and capacities finally we have covered the disorders of respiratory system all right so just brushing that in our mind once quickly we shall now look at what is the first question okay the first question says that lungs are enclosed in what okay so lungs basically are enclosed we know that lungs are a pair of spongy uh, tissues they are spongy organs that are lodged inside they are present in the thoracic cavity thoracic cavity is the upper half of the human body and within uh, they are located within the rib cage okay but when you look at the options here nothing about rib cage has been mentioned they have told about peris uh, periosteum okay perichondrium pericardium and pleural membrane remember the term pleura or pleural they all are in reference to the lungs okay pleura and pulmonary these terms all right so yeah by saying so just look at this option here the right option is the pleural membrane also another name for this can be pleura they can also just mention it as pleura or pleural membrane both would be right coming to the next question skin is an accessory organ of respiration in which of the organisms okay so skin we know uh, when we studied about respiratory structures in different animals we came across uh, gills okay gills are a type of respiratory structures we came across and then we also came across uh, uh, yeah we, we know that lungs are also respiratory structures something between them we came across was skin okay or also called as cutaneous respiration okay and another type of uh, respiration that we came across were bu was bucopharyngeal bucopharyngeal respiration okay yeah so we have seen that skin respiration is observed in organisms that are more relatively in moist environment than completely in water or completely on land because when an organism is completely in water they respire through gills okay because they can take in only dissolved gases okay and when an organism is living on land it can only breathe in gaseous form of uh, the gases and hence they require only the lungs so skin is a type of uh, medium for respiration in case of organisms as i told you whose skin is moist and such a, a organisms are uh, the amphibians which live both on land and in water and most of the times in wet environment or moist environment and also organisms annelids like uh, earthworms okay even they exhibit cutaneous respiration frogs also exhibit bucopharyngeal respiration we have already seen dur uh, during studying the synopsis as to how they carry out bucopharyngeal respiration right so right option here is skin is an accessory organ of respiration in the frog all right in humans we know they respire through lungs rabbits also respire through lungs and lizards respire through lungs because all these three are terrestrial organisms okay which respire can respire only through the lungs okay moving on to the next question approximately 70% okay 70% of carbon dioxide is absorbed by the blood will be transported to lungs in what form okay now coming to this concept of transport of carbon dioxide if you remember i had given you an example that carbon dioxide travels by three ways okay it takes the premium way of moving around in a cab okay exclusively cab 
then it can move using public transport like the bus and it can also move by road okay this was just an example given to you people in order to make you understand how the process takes place okay so uh, yeah let's just come to that part again okay now carbon dioxide we know that when uh, when carbon dioxide is moving from the tissues into the blood stream okay this is the blood stream it is going to uh, you know form into three three types one is it is going to come in association with the hemoglobin and form carbamino hemoglobin this is the exclusive pathway where only limited amount of carbon dioxide can uh, associate with hemoglobin and it can travel okay next form is it uh, hemoglobin i mean the carbon dioxide interacts with water okay to form bicarbonate okay and hydrogen ions this is the most common form that it is going to travel in okay this is bicarbonate next form that it travels is simply in its dissolved carbon dioxide form okay so i'll just write it as dissolved co2 so 70% of co2 travels in the bicarbonate form now how does it get converted here you need to remember another important uh, uh, role of an enzyme it is the carboxyl anhydrase okay so this uh enzyme enables the conversion of co2 enables a reaction of co2 and water and helps in the formation of hco3 minus plus hydrogen ion so in order to maintain balance the hydrogen ions in the given uh, content in a buffering if more amount of hydrogen ions uh, you know they accumulate then the blood went, blood and uh, you know the rbc will turn acidic which will in turn result in imbalance of many other parameters so to maintain that we know there is this chloride shift and all that okay so this is how you are supposed to link the concepts okay just uh, uh, sticking on to the question the option here is so the maximum 70% of co2 travels as the bicarbonate ions okay second highest is in the form of uh, 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 carbamino hemoglobin the least is in the form of dissolved carbon dioxide okay going ahead please go through the question next from this slide onwards i will give you some time to read the question by yourself and look at the options okay just take 20 seconds to read the question understand what they want uh, you to answer okay then i will uh, i'll come into the picture all right so here they have given match the items given in column a with those in column uh, column 1 with those in column 2 and select the correct option given below so they are saying uh, match which one of it and label the correct answer so what is tidal volume we know that tidal volume is a normal air that we breathe okay normally during every uh, inspiration and expiration so that is around 500 to 550 ml per breath okay so we breathe in half a liter of air and leave out half a liter of air so this is uh, most simplest one tidal volume is the least actually among compared to all of it so we are aware what it is now let's just start with the option so there are right option a matching with 3 there are two options a and b so let's discard these two because they are disqualified because we know the tidal volume is for sure 500 or 550 ml per breath okay now considering only a and b let's go to the next one inspiratory reserve volume okay so inspiratory reserve volume is uh, if you remember now these things are something that you need to by heart okay the numbers of it the definitions you need to understand but the numericals to some extent you need to memorize those okay so uh, <coughs> according to that the inspiratory reserve reserve volume is a okay so this interesting thing about uh, match the following is you you'll be able to finish it quickly in case you are sure of at least two to three you know uh, options 
टू टू थ्री राइट मैचेस ओके सो इफ यू आर श्योर नाउ वी नो दैट इंस्पिरेटर रिजर्व वॉल्यूम इज टू थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड टू थ्री थाउजेंड एम एल और टू लीटर्स टू थ्री लीटर्स सो लुकिंग एट दी ऑप्शन हियर बी ऑप्शन ए थ्री बी वन सो द राइट ऑप्शन इज हियर ऑलरेडी बट बिफोर मार्किंग इट लेट्स जस्ट सी द नेक्स्ट टू ऑप्शन एक्सपिरेटरी रिजर्व वॉल्यूम ओके अकॉर्डिंग टू द ऑप्शन इट इज सेंग फोर सो इज द एक्सपिरेटरी रिजर्व वॉल्यूम वन एम एल आई मीन वन लीटर टू वन पॉइंट वन लीटर जस्ट ट्राई टू रिकलेक्ट ये इट इज ओके सो it is 1 liter expiratory reserve volume this is the right option and residual volume at the end is obviously going to be 1.1100 uh, ml to 1200 ml so right option according to uh, our observations and analysis is it is b okay yeah so this question has appeared in the recent neat 2 3 years ago all right next question is lungs are made up of air filled sacs called the alveoli yes we know about it they do not collapse even after forceful expiration because of what all right so we know that lv there is some amount of air that is still left behind in the lungs right so what is that is it inspiratory reserve volume no is it tidal volume tidal volume is the normal air that we breathe so even that is not the right answer expiratory reserve volume okay that is not the right option the right option is residual volume okay so the residual volume carries stores in it residual air which maintains the structure of the alveoli and prevents the collapse okay yeah so it's also called as functional residual volume or residual volume okay yeah so by saying so we'll go to head to the next uh, question which one of the following is a possibility for most of us in regard to breathing by making a conscious effort read the question again which of the following is a possibility for most of us in regard to breathing by making a conscious effort like you are deliberately breathing okay you are breathing with concentration and with the agenda of taking in good amount of air okay so let's see what the options are one can breathe out air totally without oxygen can this happen we never know what is going out okay with the air one can breathe out air totally without oxygen so the question here i mean the uh, statement given here is whenever we take in air okay this is just a fact i want to uh, share here when we take air air itself the definition says that it is mixture of gases it has carbon dioxide oxygen carbon monoxide it has got nitrogen so many other inert gases and in so much of dust pollution all of it so the mixture of gases we are breathing whatever amount of oxygen is present in that air that we have taken in completely does not get absorbed or completely does not get used up uh, or exchanged in the alveoli the outgoing air also will have some amount of oxygen so that this is not the right option okay one can breathe out air totally without oxygen no that is not true okay next one one can breathe out air through eustachian tube by closing both nose and mouth you can close your nose and mouth but you cannot just uh, you know breathe out through the eustachian tube just try that close your take in deep air okay close your nose and mouth at the most your ear drums will you know feel a kind of push from inside but your eustachian no basically what is eustachian tube let's recollect that okay eustachian tube is the connectivity from the middle ear to the throat region okay towards your uh, throat neck throat region that is a connectivity it is from the mid ear okay so is a part of your ear specific specifically the middle ear yeah so this tube is uh, they are saying that you can uh, breathe out air through there that does not happen sorry so this is also not the right option next option is one can consciously breathe in and breathe out by moving the diaphragm alone without moving the ribs at all that also will not happen because it is an intricate physical movement they are all interdependent on each other okay so we just have to if the di we basically diaphragm is not a voluntary structure remember that it's not a voluntary muscle voluntary in the sense something which is under our control 
no it is not in our control it is involuntary and it is regulated or controlled by the action of breathing in and breathing out so that is the first thing that we cannot control it okay so and moreover diaphragm alone cannot move without with the ribs staying still so this is also not the right option but before concluding that d is the right option let's just read it once the lungs can be made fully empty by forcefully breathing all the air out from them to some extent this is right okay fully empty lungs cannot be made fully empty though forcefully air is you know you breathe out air from them some amount meager amount of air will be left but compared to the other options this option seems to be right that most amount of the air is removed out from the lungs okay by forceful breath forceful breathing up okay yeah during normal breathing we we can't say that we are emptying the lungs entirely okay during forceful breathing some amount of air most of the amount of air is given out from the lungs but again the alveoli do not collapse okay to this extent air is removed out but not so much so that the alveoli are collapsed compared to the other options the right option here is the d1 going ahead the ventilation movement okay before that i'll give you again few seconds 15 seconds to read the question yeah the ventilation movements of the lungs in mammals is governed by now do not be confused by understanding i mean by reading this ventilation what does that mean ventilation is nothing but simple breathing it is another fancy term used to say that it is it's another word for breathing simple so let us uh, let us read it that way the breathing movements of the lungs in mammals is governed by governed or controlled by what so first option here says is it muscular walls of the lungs does lung do the lungs have muscular walls no so this question is totally out of totally disqualified okay next is uh, movement is brought about by diaphragm yes diaphragm does help during breathing okay because it moves up and down during inspiration and expiration respectively intercostal muscles what are intercostal muscles wherever we have ribs okay between them there is special type of uh, muscle called as the intercostal muscle that help in the movement these are striated muscles that are attached to the ribs okay or skeletal muscles that are attached to the ribs they contract and relax as and how the ribs expand and you know kind of they move up and down during breathing so movement of ribs basically is brought about by intercostal muscles all right so the right option for this question would be sorry so right option for this question would be both b and c because both of them help in the process which both diaphragm and the intercostal muscles all right yeah so right option is d do not just mark one of them you will get a wrong uh, answer there next question is please go through in man and mammals okay see man is a mammal but what they mean here is other than humans all the other mammals that are there the air passes from outside to the lungs through what so they are asking you in short the pathway okay from where do the uh, from where does the air enter and from where does the air pass and finally where does it reach okay so we all know let's read the first option before reading the options just recollect whatever you already know so what according to our learning we know that air enters through the nostrils moves to the nasal passage then the nasopharynx then to the uh, larynx then trachea bronchus bronchioles and alveoli what is it quick recap again nostrils or not, they are nothing but the holes of your nose then the na nasal passage which is the passage inside your nose structural no part nasopharynx the part of pharynx which is connected to the nasal chamber that is nasopharynx then the larynx sound box and the trachea windpipe 
then the bronchus the first branch major branch that divides lungs uh, into two no divides trachea into two okay so uh, bronchus then the bronchioles finally the air sacs so now let's look at the options here nasal cavity larynx pharynx trachea bronchi alveoli okay here there is a small interchange according to what we know pharynx should be here larynx should be after that so let's see the other options nasal cavity larynx pharynx trachea bronchioles alveoli yes this is a to the, yes this is correct let's see the others still nasal cavity larynx pharynx trachea bronchioles bronchi alveoli so here there is there are two interchanges this should be here okay this one the nasal cavity i'm sorry uh yeah here also there there is a small error in the b1 nasal cavity pharynx should come first then larynx okay even this is not the right one nasal cavity pharynx this is right larynx one minute so we have the nasal cavity pharynx coming first then larynx yes trachea bronchioles and bronchi this is wrong because bronchi should come before bronchioles lastly nasal cavity pharynx larynx trachea bronchi bronchioles and alveoli so we have got our option here okay so moving ahead to the next question identify the wrong statement with reference to transport of oxygen which is the wrong statement they are saying okay most of the times this is something which is confusing we read all the options and then we mark what is right and without reading the question properly right so here asking us yes, what is the wrong option excuse me with reference to transport of oxygen so first thing is binding of oxygen with hemoglobin is mainly related to partial pressure of oxygen okay considered next option partial pressure of co2 can interfere with oxygen binding with hemoglobin mm, does not sound something very close to what we already know what we have studied next high concentration of hydrogen ions in alveoli favors the formation of oxyhemoglobin okay next low partial pressure of carbon dioxide in alveoli favors the formation of oxyhemoglobin okay now what is it that they are saying because such long statements take a little time in reading and understanding we let us give them uh, some time as well so what are they saying they are asking which one is wrong okay binding of oxygen with hemoglobin is mainly related to partial pressure of oxygen yes we know that based on partial pressure oxygen gets bound to the uh, hemoglobin that's what we have studied in oxygen dissociation curve so this is a correct statement no objection let's move to the next one ha, ha, partial pressure of carbon dioxide can interfere with oxygen binding with hemoglobin are you sure about this okay so partial pressure of carbon dioxide can pose a problem with oxygen binding with hemoglobin not very sure let's see the other options higher concentration of hydrogen ions in alveoli okay favors the formation of oxyhemoglobin now in alveoli has anything a uh, higher concentration of hydrogen ion got to do anything in the alveoli because we know that concentration of hydrogen ions is present in the blood stream okay so this is something which is not very uh, familiar that is sounding low partial low partial pressure of carbon dioxide in alveoli favors the formation of oxyhemoglobin yes this is true this is correct because co2 right when in the alveoli co2 is low okay that that obviously in turn refers that the oxyhemoglobin is going to be formed because their partial uh, partial pressure of oxygen is high anyway right there is low partial pressure of carbon dioxide because oxyhemoglobin high concentration high partial pressure of oxygen favors 
oxyhemoglobin which in turn the reverse is low partial pressure of carbon dioxide favors oxygen uh, oxyhemoglobin formation yes that is right so when compared coming to the b option again partial pressure of co2 can interfere with oxygen binding with hemoglobin yes is it true let's see this again let's read b and c once again pco2 has got has pco2 got to do anything with uh, oxygen binding capacity of oxygen with hemoglobin or in turn does pco2 play role in oxyhemoglobin formation yes it does okay higher so this when finally understanding the option we can come to a conclusion that the option c is wrong statement which to the question is the right option okay moving ahead reduction in ph of blood will what will it do reduction in the ph of blood will make it acidic fine so what does uh, we know that that is a very common uh, sense question options saying here are reduction in ph matlab acidic blood will decrease the affinity of ox of hemoglobin with oxygen or acidic blood will release bicarbonate ions by the liver or will it reduce the rate of heartbeat or it reduce the blood supply to the brain okay so when the blood is acidic what have what exactly happens when the blood is acidic there is decrease in the affinity of hemoglobin with the oxygen okay release of bicarbonate ions in the liver okay that will make the blood uh, that will act as buffer bicarbonates act as buffer okay because h plus ions when they are going to be supported by hco3 minus then the buffering takes place where co2 plus h2o is released next reduce the rate of heartbeat uh, heartbeat has got nothing to do with acidity or alkalinity so this is uh, somewhere something got got nothing to do with the question reduce the blood blood supply to the brain so the circulation of blood is not mainly affected by the ph okay the functionality is of different organs now maybe if acidic blood goes to the brain that may affect the brain but the supply of blood is nowhere interrupted okay so uh, re uh, reduction in ph of blood will uh, is the now we need to once again just focus if the right option is releases the bicarbonate ions by liver or in uh, decreases the affinity of hemoglobin with oxygen the right option here sorry for the pause yeah so uh yeah we were with this question where reduction in ph of the blood what will happen when the ph of the blood is acidic so will that decrease the affinity of hemoglobin to bind with the oxygen uh, we had seen that uh, it makes no difference to the heart rate okay and now to the blood supply yeah, so the uh, reduction of ph in the blood will decrease the affinity of hemoglobin with oxygen or release bicarbonate ions by the liver so the affinity of oxygen binding to hemoglobin depends on the partial pressure of oxygen and nothing else so the right option here will be to maintain the ph of the blood acidic ph is something which is not sustained by the body and body by itself has its own mechanism to deal with uh, maintaining the ph by releasing the buffer okay which is the bicarbonate ions released by the liver so as a result as the equation already shown previously here the h plus ions when they react with hco3 minus it forms carbon dioxide plus water okay so hence 
the bicarbonate ions here are released in case of liver all right so hope this is clear to you moving on to the next slide high altitude at high higher altitudes the rbc in the blood uh, human blood will what will happen to the rbcs so in the uh, synopsis while studying we have seen that altitude differs with uh, there is going to be difference in the oxygen content as in how we move higher in the altitudes that is suppose you are climbing a mountain okay as in how you are going away from the uh, sea level or the ground the oxygen level in the atmosphere decreases so what will that what will happen then there is less amount of oxygen that will bind to the hemoglobin and less amount of oxygen that will reach to most of your uh, most of the parts of your body so that will result in hypoxia a condition where less amount of oxygen is uh, uh, reaching to all the body and you're not able to breathe properly such conditions are uh, you know witnessed but here they are asking you something about rbc what is rbc what has rbc got to do with higher altitude here in case look at the beautiful mechanism that the body has what happens is for example if there are uh, as and how we uh, suppose on the ground this is just pure example to make simpler things simpler to you so to the uh, the ground level if there are 100 molecules of oxygen that can bind to uh, around say a uh, 20 because it is 25 okay let's make it 25 four times suppose 25 molecules of hemoglobin to them oxygen 100 oxygen molecules can bind okay now when you are going to climb a mountain what up happens is availability of oxygen itself is less okay so maybe there around only uh, uh, as the atmospheric oxygen goes on decreasing let us say there are only uh, 40 40 am um, 40% of oxygen available this is pure hypothetical example for you what will happen hemoglobin only uh, you know hemoglobin is going to be 25 only okay is there going to be any change in that no hemoglobin won't change but oxygen level will decrease so what will happen what happens here is more amount of the blood uh, the body of this individual manufactures more rbcs okay so that with every rbc more hemoglobin molecules will be there more and more hemoglobin molecules that are there they will try to extract they will try to absorb as much as possible so whatever amount of oxygen is available that the body has will get the capacity to absorb though you know the breathlessness your uh, heartbeat increases as it increases your breathing rate increases your breathing rate increases means every time in a short period you are breathing in more air many times so with every intake or every inspiration whatever amount of oxygen is there that enters inside the body when more amount of rbcs are there more amount of hemoglobin will be there and as a result more amount of oxygen molecules can bind to them and this hemoglobin is going to carry the oxygen to all the parts of the body for this process to take place it will take certain amount of time okay that's the reason once you go once you're climbing the higher altitude initially you will face or uh, the individual or the mountaineer will face a certain amount of trouble during breathing but over a period of time this body settles down settles down as in uh, the conditions come back to normal okay that is because there is increase in the rbc production so look at this what happens at higher altitude the rbc is in the blood human blood will increase in number decrease in number increase in size decrease in size so the right option here is increase in number the size of uh, the rbc does not increase anyway okay so it's only that the uh, blood uh, bone marrow triggers more uh, amount of rbc production read the next question yeah so they are asking here although so much of oxygen is carried in the uh, carbon dioxide is carried in the blood yet the blood does not become acidic why is it so okay we know that co2 when it is traveling it is in the, most of it 70% of carbon dioxide is transported in the form of bicarbonate ions right 
and when it is a bicarbonate ion h plus ions are produced so they are asking don't you think the presence of h plus ions will make the blood acidic okay so right option here is blood still does not get acidic because co2 is continuously diffused through the tissues and does not uh, is not allowed to accumulate uh, it's because in co2 transport blood buffers play an important role okay in co2 uh, co2 is absorbed by the leukocytes co2 combines with water to form h2co3 which is neutralized by nacio3 okay so what exactly is the right option here the blood buffers play a major role what is the blood buffer here the cl minus the chloride shift what we see all right so uh, the chloride shift here plays an important role and takes care that the blood does not turn acidic right yeah next question is due to increasing airborne allergies and pollutants many people in urban areas are suffering from respiratory disorder that cause wheezing due to what is wheezing this <gasps> this kind of breathing you know wherein there is uh, there is a sound made during normal breathing you know some kind of um, <clears throat> sound that is normally not heard during regular breathing so such kind of wheezing effect which is highly seen in urban areas because of pollutants or allergens what is it about the question is this wheezing is due to reduction in the uh, secretion of surfactant by the pneumocytes okay uh, is it benign growth or mucus lining of uh, nasal cavity is it inflammation of bronchi and bronchioles or is it the proliferation of fibrous tissue and damage of alveolar walls so what is it this wheezing sound they are asking surfactant is nothing but it's a uh, content uh, it's a substance secreted by pneumocytes these surfactants help in proper exchange of gases okay they uh, form a proper uh, association with the alveoli and help in the exchange of gases so is there something wrong that happens uh, the pollutants and allergens cause problem to that or is it benign growth on mucus lining of benign growth is nothing but cancerous kind of growth tumor growth okay uh, growth on mucus lining of nasal cavity or is it the inflammation of bronchi and bronchioles okay or is it the proliferation of fibrous tissue and damage to the alveolar walls so the pollutants and allergens generally cause inflammation of the bronchi and bronchioles okay the pollutants uh, most of the time do not reach till the alveoli whatever damage they have to cause they cause at the uh, air passage okay just till the till they reach before they reach the alveoli the infection effects are already seen so right option here is c next question is which of the following options correctly represents the lung conditions in asthma and emphysema respectively so what is asthma it's a respiratory disorder okay and emphysema is also the same so let's see what exactly uh, are how are they different from each other so inflammation inflammation of bronchioles decreased respiratory surface so they are saying asthma is this and emphysema is this okay so is asthma inflammation of bronchioles is asthma increased number of bronchioles is asthma increased respiratory surface is asthma decreased respiratory surface okay so the option compared to these more relatively and obviously the right option looks like a let's just see emphysema emphysema is decreased respiratory surface or increased respiratory surface inflammation of bronchioles inflammation of bronchioles right option ultimately and quite obviously is a because emphysema is a damage caused to the alveolar sacs okay when the alveolar sacs the, uh, there is reduction in the capacity respiratory surface uh it, when when we say that alveoli is damaged it ultimately means that it is a reduction in the respiratory surface okay so right option here is a moving on to the next question smoking destroys the cilia in the respiratory passage okay passageways or pa uh, passages passages smoking destroys the cilia we, there is cilia cilia are nothing but projections hair like linings along the entire respiratory surface uh, pa uh, passage the purpose of cilia is to 
attack any kind of pathogen that enters or any kind of dust particles that enter they help they get attached here and they are eaten by the phagocytic cells okay so now smoking destroys the cilia in the respiratory passage so smoking uh, tobacco okay that causes problem we all are aware that smoking can cause lung cancer right so what is the option they are asking so this smoking destroys cilia in the respiratory passage is the statement they are saying so this makes it harder to move air in and out of the lungs is it the right answer or this decreases the surface area for respiration this slows blood flow through the lung blood vessels or this makes it harder to keep the lungs clean the right option is when we are speaking speaking about respiratory passages we need to focus on the input and output of air right option here is it makes it harder okay because cilia no cilia also plays not uh, does not uh, just help in holding of the phagos I mean, this pathogens or dust particles it also takes care of uninterrupted air flow when something is wrong with the cilia a lot of mucus is secreted okay so this mucus somewhat makes it difficult for gaseous state of air to pass in and out so the right option here is a which makes it harder to move air in and out of the lungs okay read the next question most oxygen is carried by the blood dash most carbon dioxide is carried by the blood dash okay so the first we'll just see the first part first uh, so most oxygen is carried by the blood attached to the hemoglobin or dissolved in plasma or in the form of h plus ions okay or attached to hemoglobin okay so this option is asked twice so we all know that oxygen has only one way of travel through the blood and that is in association with the hemoglobin so we will focus on option a and d because b is not the right option nor is c now carbon dioxide is carried by the blood in the form of bicarbonate similar question we have already dealt before okay so this is right well let's see this attached to the hemoglobin no so right option we know 70% of carbon dioxide is in the form of bicarbonate so hence the right option is a where most oxygen is carried by blood attached to hemoglobin most carbon dioxide is carried by blood in the form of bicarbonate ions all right yeah next question is which of the following normally contains the highest concentration of oxygen okay so they are asking oxygen is present in highest amount in the blood cells or inhaled air air in the pulmonary trunk or blood entering the lungs so which one of it has got maximum amount of oxygen definitely not the body cells because the body cells will use the oxygen and you know convert it into carbon dioxide when compared to the other options this is not the right answer so highest amount concentration of oxygen is it present in the inhaled air inhaled air is nothing but mixture of gases it contains as uh, already discussed before it contains mixture of so many gases it can have co2 it can have co it can have nitrogen it can have so many other gases so in all of that oxygen's concentration is that the highest no so inhaled air is also not the right answer air in the pulmonary trunk okay air in the pulmonary trunk pulmonary trunk is nothing but your entire uh, you know these bronchioles uh, alveoli and all those so the concentration of oxygen is it higher there or is it in the blood entering the lungs okay the blood that is entering the lungs okay so is it highest present there so the highest concentration of oxygen is present in the see blood entering the trunk uh, entering the lungs from where that is the next question when we think of choosing d as the right option the question will be blood entering the lungs from where from the heart or from uh, from which part of the body right so the blood it should either be blood leaving the lungs okay if there is any kind of uh, you know grace marks that is planned to be given this should be changed to blood leaving the lungs then this would be the right answer otherwise air in the pulmonary trunk has got high concentration of oxygen when compared to the other options all right 
yeah moving ahead to the next one now this is quite an applicative question which has some numbers and all that so we will read it uh, read it little carefully a biochemist mixed 10 drops of acid with 100 ml of water he mixed what he mixed 10 drops of acid what happens in 100 ml of water he mixed 10 drops of acid making the water acidic okay next and the ph dropped because the ph of water is 7 so ph dropped from 7.4 to 5 of course because you have added acid there next what she did is she then mixed 10 drops of acid with 100 ml of blood this time same 100 ml was there but it was of blood red color she mixed 10 drops of same acid what happens okay the ph dropped from 7.4 okay to 7.2 not a major difference what is the reason for this difference so only in water when she added acid it came from 7.4 to 5 but in blood when she added 10 drops it just came down by 0.2% why has the uh, ph not reduced as much as it reduced in the water we already know the answer it is because of the blood buffers okay so let's see what it is is it because the blood is thicker than water na okay is it because blood is already very acidic so the acid has less effect no blood is not acidic blood is saturated with oxygen there is little room for acid this also is not very relevant blood contains buffers that reduce the ph so what are the buffers here we have chloride ions okay that act as buffers in maintaining the ph of the blood okay this was an applicative question next one <coughs> which of the following is not involved in the neural control of ventilation neural control ventilation is breathing which one of it is not involved so uh, we all know that medullary medulla oblongata is a region where exactly the respiration uh, you know mechanism the control of respiration takes place right so uh, which of the following is not involved in neural control of ventilation neurons in the medulla no they do play a role the vagus nerve that also plays role because see vagus nerve is the longest and the uh, strongest nerve in the human body which almost almost connects to each and every major organ okay so this does play a role in the uh, control the contraction state of diaphragm okay the chemo sensors on the surface of the medulla so which one of it has not got something to do with neural control see when it comes to diaphragm and all we know that breathing and all that happens under there is some connection between the ventilation breathing and diaphragm but does it have control with the nervous system has that got anything to do with the nervous system or the neurons and all no it is simple physical change that happens because lungs expand the diaphragm are, is going to show some kind of movement okay so the right option here is a contraction state of the diaphragm and none of the other options okay next which is not a structure of the respiratory system pharynx we know the nasopharynx bronchus is uh, does play a role larynx is a uh, uh, sound box hyoid is a bone present in the neck region it is present near the larynx it is a bone uh, and is a part of the skeletal system but has got nothing to do with the respiratory system so the right option here is hyoid which is a bone remember hyoid bone is a bone of your neck you know when uh, there are people who unfortunately commit suicide you know by hanging it is the hyoid bone that breaks and when this bone breaks it causes the distortion of the body and the uh, you know it is an important uh, it cuts the nerve that connects blood to the brain okay and vice versa so that is how uh, the death in case of hanging takes place a breaking of the hyoid bone next one why are bird lungs more efficient than human lungs okay so the question something this is a new concept you know about uh, bird lungs why is it uh, more efficient okay this is because 
the birds use one way of air flow rather than two system now what exactly does this mean okay so the lungs are oxygenated on both inhalation and exhalation what happens here is in case of uh, birds they have a different mechanism whenever bird take in air okay during inspiration the lungs you know are filled with oxygen during expiration also the lungs contain oxygen okay so what is it that they expire i mean they respire out you may ask okay it's simple air so they have kind of one way they do not take in oxygen and give out carbon dioxide carbon dioxide is the energy produced so much that you know the com complete usage of carbon dioxide uh, oxygen takes place and there is only oxygenation that happens to the lungs so lungs are oxygenated on both the inhalation and exhalation hence birds use uh, bird lungs uses only one way rather than air in and out flow system this is a very different kind of system that is seen in case of birds next an advantage of gas exchange in water compared with gas exchange in air is that okay so what is it water exchange in uh, you know gas exchange in water is more efficient than that in the air why is it so let's see water usually contains higher concentration of oxygen than air water is easier to move out sorry to move over the respiratory surfaces okay respiratory surface does not dry out in water okay ventilation requires less energy so right option here is c why is it so explain the advantage of gas exchange in water is more because the respiratory surface do not dry out in water see what happens here is water is always in association with, suppose let us consider gills okay these are the gills gills are always going to be in water when they are always in water they always have the source of dissolved oxygen okay that can exchange with uh, from water into the lungs and can give out carbon dioxide okay so that is more advantageous as the process happens continuously without any break okay what happens in us we breathe we stop and there is some kind of gap that is uh, established in case of terrestrial breathing but our efficiency is relatively lesser when compared to aquatic breathing so the right option here is c in the blood bicarbonate ions help transport uh, help in the transport of oxygen act as buffers okay against the ph changes they are transported by hemoglobin they are attached to numerous carbon dioxide molecules keeping them from solution right option here is we know that they act as buffers which is not a structure of the respiratory system this question is repeated okay it is the hyoid the cells formed in the alveolar wall that remove foreign particles from pulmonary alveoli are called okay see so, you now the every organ of your body has its own defense mechanism and mechanism as in different uh, defense cells that help in defending those organs with respect to uh, lungs okay these are called as the uh, alveolar macrophage cells okay alveolar macrophages are types of wbcs that are going to engulf any foreign particle that is encountered so alveolar region produces uh, certain specialized cells called as macrophage cells that are going to uh, help in keeping foreign particles away okay So alveolar macrophages, which are also called as dust cells, remove foreign debris from the alveolar. The structure which does not contribute to breathing movements in mammals, okay, though larynx is a part of the sound box is a part of respiratory system, it does not contribute in breathing. See if you have voice or not, if you have sound box or not, are you going to breathe or not? Breathing will continue. because ribs do play a role in breathing see i'm saying breathing diaphragm does play a role in breathing and so do so, uh, so do the intercostal muscles okay next one the alveoli of the lungs do not contain air okay they specified air the alveoli does not contain air because we normally because we normally do not ventilate our lungs at high enough rate ventilate means we do not breathe in enough okay the lungs have too many alveoli to breathe or to fill in air with there is dead space in the trachea and bronchi 
the dead uh, the trachea and bronchi are too small in volume so the alveoli of lung do not contain air because <clears throat> because the there is a dead space in the trachea and bronchi what does this mean it is it says that the alveoli do not contain air with 20.9% oxygen because incoming air is mixed with diff with air left in the dead space from the trachea and bronchi that has uh, had some of the oxygen removed by the lungs always some amount of oxygen will be there in the uh, respiratory system okay either in the uh, completely in the alveoli or in the dead space of the tr uh, trachea and bronchus right option here is c moving on to the next question yeah this graph is shown here whose options are given here okay the graph shows four dissociation curves a b c d we know what are dissociation curves right sigmoid curve represents the uh, that of the hemoglobin and a log curve here steep curve represents that of the myoglobin we have studied two of these these types so the question here is which curve represents the oxygen dissociation curve of myoglobin looking at this we rightly know that it is a okay yeah next question the graph <clears throat> the graph shows an oxygen dissociation curve of hemoglobin oh, sorry for hemoglobin okay we know that fine next where in the body will the hemoglobin be saturated at the percentages shown at point 1 2 and 3 the graph okay so what is the question they are saying okay just listen to the options uh, the right answer now what happens here is the blood in the vena cava okay what is vena cava it is the vein that carries deoxygenated blood from all the parts of the body to the heart okay so the blood in the vena cava could be the last percentage saturation since it has released the oxygen into the respiratory respiring body tissues okay whatever oxygen air it is going to i mean blood it is going to carry into the heart is almost without oxygen because all of the oxygen that it has carried from the lungs it has distributed now it only has carbon dioxide because veins are the blood vessels that get deoxygenated blood to the heart from all the parts of the body right yeah now the pulmonary vein would contain blood with the highest percentage saturation since it carries blood from the lungs where the partial pressure of oxygen is very high and oxygen binds with the hemoglobin okay so what happens here uh the pulmonary vein okay pulmonary vein is going to carry oxygen highest amount of saturation takes place here because pulmonary vein is getting oxygenated blood from the lungs to the heart okay so this has highest amount of oxygen next <clears throat> next one is that the pulmonary vein leads to the left atrium and then the left ventricle okay So it goes. To, so this is the least vena cava. Next highest is this one, and then it is the left ventricle, which comes from the right left atrium. Okay. So considering this, what happens? We know this is a human heart, four chambers. Okay. Blood enters. Deoxygenated blood comes from vena cava. Oxygenated blood comes from lungs to the left atrium, goes to the left ventricle. Okay. And uh, highest of concentration will be here. okay least will be here mid one highest will be this one rather so this is highest second highest this is the least so right option here is vena cava is the least when it left ventricle is the second least and pulmonary vein is the highest i hope this is clear i want you to observe this uh, for graph and question again and analyze why this option is uh, the correct answer
I hope this is right. Next one. The presence of carbon dioxide in blood with lower pH uh, because CO2 combines with dash. Read the question again. The presence of carbon dioxide in blood will lower pH because carbon dioxide combines with what? Okay. With the rate of reaction increased by what? Okay. So we know that the reaction here CO2 interacts with water to form HC, uh, sorry, HCO3 minus plus H plus. Right. We know this reaction. When you study about respiration, this equation should be, you know, written like a like rock in your mind okay so we know that presence of co2 in the blood will uh, lower the ph because co2 combines with water okay to form h plus and hco3 minus ions this is brought about by carbonic anhydrase reaction okay so this is straight away we know that this is the right option which of the statements about hemoglobin is false? Hemoglobin allows, okay, is it that hemoglobin allows uh, the blood to carry large amount of oxygen? Need not be because it allows only four, every hemoglobin allows only four atoms of oxygen. Hemoglobin contains a single polypeptide chain with a very high affinity for oxygen. Understand that hemoglobin contains two polypeptide chains and not one. We right away know that this is the right option. But before marking, read the other options as well. Hemoglobin is packed inside the red blood cells. Yes, we know that this is true. Fetal hemoglobin is structurally different from the adult hemoglobin. Yes, that is also true. So the right option, which is false about hemoglobin is this. Because it is made up of two polypeptide chains and not one. External gills, trachea and lungs all share which of the following sets of characteristics. Okay. So part of gas exchange system exchange both carbon dioxide and oxygen and they increase the surface area for diffusion. Okay, this is what all of them do. Okay, uh, just go through the other options and see why they are not right. And the next top, next one. The largest proportion of CO2 carried by the blood is in the form of, we know this, bicarbonate ions in the blood cells okay so it is is it the bicarbonate ions in the plasma or blood cells it's bicarbonate ions in the plasma not blood cells yeah next question as uh, the blood becomes fully oxygen saturated hemoglobin is combining with dash molecules of oxygen four molecules of oxygen to say that it is saturated which of the following statements about gas exchange and respiration is false okay so whole body respiration refers to gas exchange between the mammal body and its environment temperature is an important limiting influence on gas exchange in air breathing mammals Chemical breakdown of nutrients from ATP is an oxygen requ requiring metabolic process. The diffusion of gases is uh, in air is faster than their diffusion in water. The right option here is temperature. Temperature is an important limiting influence. That is, temperature usually has little or no effect on gas exchange for air breathers because, uh, but it can be a major uh, factor to ectothermic water breathers. Okay, so here temperature, you know, even when you are having fever, your breathing rate is not majorly affected, right? Okay. So in an aquatic animal, uh, an aquatic animal has no specialized respiratory surfaces and must rely on simple diffusion alone to carry out gas exchange. Which of the following would not be a characteristic of this animal? Okay. It is, it is, it would be a fast swimmer and an active predator. Now, how is that? See, an aquatic animal has no specialized respiratory structures. No specialized respiratory structure, but it relies on simple diffusion. Which would be characteristic? If it is, act, either it is an active predator, which means that not a lot of energy. Immediately, it can swim fast and it can grab the, grab the uh, uh, prey. Okay. 
like its body would be very thin or possible have hollow water filled air cavity central cavity no its metabolic rate would rather be low no definitely if metabolic rate is low then it can't be a fast organism okay or have a simple if it has simple respiratory structures it means that it can easily have more energy access to more energy and can do things quickly okay the right option is this one the function of mucus elevator in mammalian respiratory system is to function of mucus elevator it is to trap and remove particulate matter that has entered the respiratory system okay it is uh, does not help in moving surfactant from bronchi no it does not produce negative pressure on inhalation no it does not stimulate contribution of rib mus musculature it has got nothing to do with the above three options yeah i think this is a repeated one sorry a water borne molecule of oxygen arriving at gills of a fish would encounter which of the following structures prior to entering the fish's blood okay so uh, an, a molecule carrying oxygen okay Ox entering oxygen from where will it first come so the right option for this is the gill filaments the lamella okay when you study the structure of gills these are the gill filaments long filaments of gill these are the filaments this is the lamella this part is the lamella and the blood capillary that are present inside okay so what is it these are gill filaments this is the lamella and these are the blood vessels right option is uh, d which of the following statements about the mammalian respiratory system is false is it the structural integrity of the thoracic cavity is essential to generate negative pressure during inhalation no the surfactant reduces the surface tension on the alveoli inhalation is a passive process in mammalian lungs while exhalation requires muscle contraction this is an important this is something which is mammalian respiratory system this is false because it does require inhalation is a passive process they're saying inhalation is an active process while exhalation is a passive process okay which of the following would you expect to find in an insect's respiratory system okay which of this would you find in insect respiratory system spiracles okay which of the following would normally be present in blood plasma of mammals blood plasma of mammals we will have all of these because blood plasma has rbcs bicarbonate ions and water so option is all of the above a person receives a serious cut on his back of the neck and a deep and which is deep enough to severely damage the brain stem or the lower medulla the respiratory effect of this type of wound would likely be catastrophic and it might result in complete cessation of breathing understand one thing this is because the medulla region medulla medulla oblongata is a part of the brain stem if something affects medulla oblongata breathing is arrested this can be fatal a jellyfish an earthworm and a lion all use which of the following in their gas exchange systems okay they use simple diffusion okay yeah go through a uh, question of give which is given as 55 and 56 once again just see the possibility as why the other options are not right okay let's go to the last one during inspiration the air is brought into the lungs by working of the uh, thoraco abdominal abdominal pump whereby okay the question is during inspiration the air is brought into the lungs by thoraco abdominal pump means parts of thoracic and the abdomen that act okay the diaphragm contracts to lengthen the thoracic cavity yes the chest muscles pull up the ribs to widen the thoracic cavity yes 
abdominal muscles flex relax yes so the right option is all of the above before birth the human body does not release co2 is it so no they do release they get rid of co2 through its own lungs via a special circulation no i have already explained the first time when a baby breathes or comes in contact with the atmospheric air is when it is delivered okay or when it is out of its mother's womb it stores excess co2 in allantois until birth no it excretes it out and it is happening through the placenta of the mother okay yeah so here we finish uh, the questionnaire discussion we have discussed around 55 questions here all right do not focus on the numbers that are there so these questions will overall uh, have co have covered overall uh, the concepts related to this chapter and hope this helps you please study whatever source you have okay uh, and see that you are able to solve as many as questions as possible okay see you all thank you again and wish you all the best